welcome to the Select Security Stadium, home of the Witness Vikings. And it's been through so much recently. We're here today in the Owl League app, and we're going to get to know the Witness Vikings. It's uh, the boys are behind us, and this is the reality of the situation. The club's been saved by the Vicky Consortium, but there's so much going on, and we wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth today from this famous old club, formed in 1873, one of the original 1895 clubs, 1989. World Club Challenge winning seven Challenge Cups, three championships, like some Martin of Fire, Kurt Sorensen, Big Jim Mills, Andy Gregory, Keith Elwell, and Jonathan Davis. Some stellar names in rugby league history. Today we're going to meet the people behind the saviour and behind the club. First up, we're meeting a man who's in communication all the time with the media. Sam, tell us a bit about your role here and how, how difficult it's been over the past couple of months. Uh, well, I head up all the media and communications here at the club. Um, I'm not going to lie, last couple of weeks has probably been the hardest I've ever done working in. I've been here three years and that's probably been the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. But at the same time, it's probably been the most rewarding as well. Why, why, why rewarding? Just because we were literally on the brink and obviously there's a group of unpaid people in there it's not just myself that I haven't been paid that we just rallied around on that Saturday after we went into administration and said look let's just have a go let's see what we can do see if we can save this club and then obviously with everyone's efforts that's what happened a week later and you've got a great set of lads as you can see behind us and, and no one were paid that month the, the month has gone and no one's going to get paid in that month everyone's took it on the chin and they're moving forward together exactly I, I, in a weird way it's probably the administration's probably been a good thing just because it's galvanised everyone, it's given everyone a bit of energy and it's like we're starting on like a fresh sheet of paper, we can do whatever we want and it, at the minute things are looking alright, we're obviously with this new board as well so hopefully things can keep moving forward. Every story needs a hero or at least somebody who everybody can look up to and Phil Finney, you, you've, you've been here for a long time, how many years have you been here now? Oh, I've been here 10 years, well, 10 years in February just gone so not a great way to celebrate my 10th year at the club recently. I think you could celebrate your job more than most people in rugby league for what you've achieved with the academy. And it's seven, 12 at 17 last weekend were academy prospects. You've overseen that for the last few years. Yeah. And massive you know, kudos to you, mate, because you've developed some amazing young players and amazing young men because it's very difficult to transition from that age into the first team. But you've, you seem to have that right over most clubs in rugby league, and why do you think that is? I think I think it's it's a team effort first of all. Do you know what I mean? I think we started here years ago, um, and one of the fortunate things, which doesn't feel that fortunate at the time, is that we haven't got a massive amount of resource. You know, so naturally, you know, the, the, one of the things that we had to do was develop our own players, and that came from the very top of the club at the time. And it was it was Terry O'Connor who was working at the time that persuaded me to come back into the sport. And uh, so there was a pathway for young players, which obviously, you know, some clubs it's it's difficult, you know, to get in the first team when you've you know if you I don't know if you're at Leeds and Kev Sinfield's there, good luck as a young loose forward going there or Sean O'Loughlin at Wigan. So, um, first of all, you know, there was a pathway for the players and, and it was supported from, from the very top. One of the things that, that, that we, or two of the things we concentrate on is trying to get the lads to become really, really loyal to the club and get them to work as hard as they can. You know, and it's not that, it's not that scientific. When life deals you a blow, <laughs> there's two ways to take it. You either wilt and shy away or you meet your face on and fight. This club, this town, has met this face on and fought it. But how did you find out about the news? Take me back to the day when it all hit the fan. Uh, well, to be fair, I got it was about three weeks. No, oh, do you know what? I don't even know how long ago it was. Now it was probably about a month ago, and I just got a phone call saying, "Will you go to Media City and meet meet with the consortium that are you know going to uh, look to buy the club and?" So I was involved in those discussions and I'll be quite frank, I hadn't seen a cash flow ever up until that point. It was the first time I'd seen some of that type of information and, and things were going well. And then unfortunately, one of the major sort of players in the consortium pulled out, uh, which jeopardised the rest of it. Uh, the consortium were brilliant, by the way, you know, the local people, the not multimillionaires, the people that love the club and want the best for the club. Um, so I think we're in good hands, but initially they didn't have enough resource to, to get it over the line on their own. and then. 
I was quite keen anyway to try to do some of the fans and whether that was a share issue or a fundraising event or whatever it was and unfortunately the um, the administrators were appointed about a week later and, and they came in and that was one of the most ruthless experiences I've ever I've ever been through in my life you know with those guys you know they're just their job is just to sell off assets isn't it and, and get what they can and so that was that was really really difficult and at the time we weren't allowed to sort of publicize anything so we got the uh, on the Friday when they actually placed us into administration uh, we then we weren't given the green light until the Saturday to start doing all the fundraising but that Friday we've got a couple of people in the office uh, on a name check Dave Rolte <laughs> So whenever a camera normally is out or, or uh, he's the first one to get on it. But that day, funnily enough, he was nowhere to be seen and I was just the one that was left in the office that ended up having to sit in there with the administrators and face the press. You negative points at the moment, all yeah. the negative Vikings, but hey, you, can you get there? Aren't they going to the show the night? Witness will finish fifth <laughs> Did he? and they'll beat Toronto in the, in the final, <laughs> in the playoff final uh, to go back to Super League. Is yeah. that the dream? Oh, that you know what? That would be a brilliant. It would be really about it. That, 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 that would be a dream. Oh, we'd fill it, wouldn't we? Yeah. We'd fill it definitely. Uh, that that would be an unbelievable dream. I think uh, Anthony's um, he's a character, isn't he? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's a massive character, and it'd be brilliant. And what a story! But I think realistically, I'm not sure that's that's going to be the case. But you know, we can all dream, can't we? We're here with the prince now, Danny Craven. You do a testimonial soon, yeah. and I, so. Well, you've been at this club, obviously, you've seen the highs and, and, and obviously now the lows. After the relegation, nobody expected uh, the administration. Um, how, did it, how, did, how did it feel, obviously, from somebody who's been at the club so long as such an integral part of the team and, and the town? How did it feel from your perspective? Um, oh, well, obviously, it was a shock to everyone. Uh, I remember I was sat at home, it was a, a Thursday night before training and we was due to get paid the day after. We just got a text saying that we weren't getting paid this month and um, obviously we came in the, the day after we had meetings and stuff which was like I said yeah obviously a massive shock and you know we're, we're lucky that we've got some good people around the town who's, who's basically helped us stay afloat. How did, how did it feel obviously the relegation must have been a shock for, yeah. from, from your perspective obviously playing Super League for so many years how have you found the championship because I, I personally think it's really really tough well, to be, I've, I've played on loan in the Championship at Featherstone and at Halifax and I've always said that I think the Championship physically is tougher than Super League. I think Super League's just more skillful and faster. Um, you know, and obviously some of the lads here have they've not played Championship before, so it's been a bit of a shock to the system, especially with the pitches and stuff. But, you know, we've, we've got to get used to it. If we've got aspirations to get back up to Super League, you know, we've got to go to these places and be as professional as we can and grind out wins. Mate, ten years in, you know this town, you know these people. How, how how well have the fans done and the people behind the scenes who still haven't been paid have done to pull together to to look at you know with, with the Vicky Consortium to take this club on into the future? It's like I said, it's been unbelievable. Without without the people who we've got around the town and you know the the staff who we've got here, we won't have a club and you know there'd be thirty of us out of a job and, and looking for other clubs or looking for jobs elsewhere. So you know without the the staff here and the people who've witnessed, we, we wouldn't be where we are now, so we're lucky. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. Tough time at Lee, come to witness. Um, did you, did you, were you aware of any problems whatsoever when you took the job? No, not none at all. Uh, it was probably one of the major factors in coming over, uh, was the the story that was was sold to me, uh, the opportunity presented, and, and the recruitment and the facilities we've got, and the infrastructure within the club was. Uh, when I met with the officials, it, it all sounded good and it was all in place. And I really genuinely believe that it was a, a proper chance of getting back into Super League. On the field, without a doubt, there's a, there's a proper chance of getting in Super League. I, I think still, as I still think it's attainable. I think that fifth spot, fourth spot, is attainable because you've got such a good set of lads and, and such a, a core of young quality players at the club but walking in today and looking out on the field and seeing the reality of it you're here on your own you, you've got a couple of uh, lads from your academy helping you but have you ever faced anything like this before 
No, it's uh, I'm almost a, a one-man band at, at the moment at times. Um, it, it's been tough. Um, I've been really fortunate, like you've just said, that I've got a really good group of players. Um, the senior players have been fantastic. Uh, they've, they've given me lots of help uh, off the field coaching-wise, and, and the young guys' are, are, are attitudes are you know superb. And I think that's the one thing for me that's been a real positive coming through all this. And, and without that, I don't think I'd have got through it. Um, but yeah, it is you know, from an ideal point of, work, work, point of view. Uh, Things are not in place like they should be, but we found a way to make it work and we're still getting results on the field and we're digging ourselves out of an hole and looking upwards at the moment. Humans in general are resourceful creatures and you go into the office and I can't believe the positivity and the energy given that those people aren't being paid. That is such a testament to them as individuals and to what this club means to this town. Yeah, it does, uh, and I think a lot of that's been probably um, supplied by the, the fans and, and the passion they've shown and uh, the amount of money they've handed over. You know, only a couple of weeks ago I was sat in the office and there were school children turning up, handing the pocket money over. There's a, an old lady, she turned up and handed some money over, she'd save for a washing machine. So, you know, it means a lot to the people within this town and, and all the staff, you know, behind the scenes from day one, uh, whether they've been paid or not been paid, have turned up and done the job to the best of their ability. So it's, it's a credit to everyone at the club. Where do you go from here now? You're in the negative points, so how do you go about restructuring with, with, with literally no finances? And I, what I'm talking about is there's some greats attached to this club and people know out there that there's there's no money in it, but do you try and pull some ex-players down? Do you try and pull some people in to help you? Because there's, there's plenty of people who I'm sure who are desperate for a job in rugby league who might just want to come and help you. They might just not know there's an opportunity. Would you take help now from people out there, maybe a Bobby Goulding or somebody like that who's out there? I, th I think you'd be stupid to turn anything away. Um, you know, you've got to explore, no matter what you're in, whether it's rugby league or business, you've got to explore every opportunity that, that gives you a chance to improve and, and give you the, you know, the best opportunities to move up. Uh, so I can't I can't rule anything out. Um, but I said it, it's you know the club's been behind the scenes. It, it's it's been in turmoil, but on the front everyone's just worked really hard, been been composing what we've been doing, and uh, you know we, we're on our way up. And our first goal, I think, as a group, is to get to zero points. And yeah. we said, get to zero points. Um, you know, we might get to zero, and the team above, above us might be on ten points by then. We, we've no idea. But our first goal is to get to zero points, and then when we get to zero, we'll see where the teams above us are, uh, and you know, and then we'll look to catch them as well. As a young lad growing up, I was super proud to be from Winmore. Proud from Winmore, LS14 crew. Uh, for all you LS14 people out there. You're the king of Ditton. Tell me about Ditton. Firstly, tell me all about Ditton. Oh, Ditton, it's, it's, to be honest, it's not the nicest of areas. Um, you know, it's a bit of, I like to think I'm street smart, you know, I've sort of learned growing up and that, and it's not the worst place in the world, but I've had a good upbringing, and it's definitely helped me out in rugby, I reckon, being from Ditton. 60,000 people in this town, it's not a big town. Uh, why has it produced so many good rugby players, and why has this club been so successful? And really, it, sh it shouldn't, by rights, by the size of it, have the success it's had. Well, that, that's the thing, isn't it? Like you said, it's only a small town. Um, I just think it's a hard-working town, you know. You, you get people like this, you know, and there's a reason why rugby union's down south and rugby league's up north. Um, well, like I said, it's just a um, hard-working town and people just want to graft for each other and you're seeing that with what happened in the, the situation we've been in and all the people have come out to support us. Everyone just wants to graft for each other, wants to work for each other and I think that's why it produces so many people. And then when you get into the academy, we've got one of the best academy setups, I believe. Uh, Phil Finney's done a lot of work with me growing up and, and the players around my age and our setup's very good. They've got a good education set up now and it's just a good club to be at, mate, and everyone just wants to work for each other. Gels has been in our show recently and he were absolutely outstanding. Now, this year, um, he believes you're going to finish in fifth. He's got it in his mind and you're going to beat Toronto in this million pound game. But also there's the 1895 Cup yeah. and that gives an opportunity for, for every club in championship to get to Wembley. How special would it be for the fans of this club? You might get there in Challenge Cup, as Gell says. He said, there's going to be a problem for the RFL. So we'll be in the Challenge Cup and the 1895 Cup final. And I love his passion and his energy. But even if you got to 1895 Cup final, a day out at Wembley would be such a reward for these fans. Well, witnesses know we're going for Wembley back in the day, obviously before my time. Um, I've, I've seen the game and that from the uh, World Cup Challenge and I've seen all them games, so witnesses known to be at Wembley and 
like Gail said, let's get to both. I think they, I think they got asked that at the start of the season, and the answer was we'll fill two teams. So why not? Let's let's just go for it. You know what? What's the worst that can happen? Sort of thing. Yeah, outstanding. Best of luck this year, Jack. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank King you. Of the King of Ditton.